Hello and welcome to CS 2.30. This is lecture 10 and this is lesson 1. And in this particular lesson we're going to be looking at working with um, jQuery and Ajax. So first before we start to get to that we want to have a look at reviewing the HTTP protocol. And in particular we want to look at HTTP's two key methods get and put um, in more detail really. And we're going to look at how we can use these methods in conjunction with Ajax for sending data to a server application. I mentioned previously, of course, that you know everything to do with client-server apps in the web relies on understanding HTTP. So Ajax is no different. So if we go and have a quick look at the code that we had earlier in lectures, and it should be here, then we see a lot happening here. Um, and in particular, we'll see this. Uh, so xhttp is the variable that we're, we're using that is a very specific kind of object called the XML HTTP request. And that's the one that does the work for us, that makes all the connections back and forth between the client, which is your browser, and the service um, or server. And as part of that, then it has um, a method associated with it called open and it allows us to be able to make a request and in this particular case and the example we saw in class it was calling the local host and they're downloading a file there called ajaxinfo.txt and it used get as the protocol. So there's a lot happening there, a lot going on and it would be just so easy to copy and paste it and use it without actually knowing what's happening. But, you know, this is a synchronous, is the, we, we could ask this question, is it a synchronous or an asynchronous request? Can you make both types of requests? And did it use some get method? And what's that like? You know, so there's loads happening there that we really need to worry about. So all web communication via the browser, as I said, is HTTP. And the, HT, the XML HTTP request option or object actually handles everything first. So that, that, that makes sure that all the proper protocol is handled. So I used get in that particular one there. Um, could also have used post. And in fact, remember, there are a lot of HTTP methods. Get, post, put, head, delete, patch, and options. And we'll see, we'll see options a little bit later in one of the other lessons. Okay, We're just going to look at get and post now. So get is used to request data from a specified resource, and it's the most commonly used HTTP method. Get query string, and that's a list of main value pairs. It's usually sent as part of the URL in a get request. So if we have a request here we're making to myserver.com and we're calling uh, an app or a service on the server side called phone processor.php, then we usually have a, a, a little question mark after the, the name of the resource and then a list of name value pairs separated by an ampersand. Okay, and that's how we send name value data to a service that handles get requests. So we're doing a couple of things here. We're looking to give us the request, and we're also using it to supply some data so that the service could use these name value pair data to um, decide on how to handle the request. Just an additional piece of information. So um, the features of get are that uh, the, the downside, I suppose, is that the get request can be cached by the server, okay? And they remain in the browser history. And really, they should never be used when sending sensitive data because they're here. So you would never use a username and password as a GET request because it would be visible. Um, they have length restrictions and are just used to request data from a service with, um, and specify options for, for that request. Um, and we saw that in class. If you use um, Google, for example, you can see the URL encoded requests and the location bar with all the name value pairs. Okay? The other alternative is a post method. And that's used to send raw data to a server and to that usually used to create or update some kind of resource. Um, the data that's sent with post is stored in the request body of the HTTP request. It's not in the URL. So you can see here, if we were to use something like we did with curl, or, and, and we did this manually, um, or we look at the transcript or, 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 of, of the of the protocol um, dialogue between the client and the server, we see something like this. The data is in the body. And again, it's name value pairs, no surprise there. But these requests are never cached by the server, and they don't remain in your browser history. You can't actually bookmark a post request, and there's no restrictions on the data length. So you can find a really good description of the get and post at w3schools.com um, and the various methods. Right, so now we want to talk about Ajax. So we used the Ajax example over here, for example, in class, and we made a GET request using using GET. Um, well, this one didn't use GET, but we used GET when we looked at the Ajax version. Okay, we can also use POST method of Ajax. So, um, and we can we can um, 
I suppose we can use get in, in a situation where we just want the very simple, simple and send some simple data to the server. Post should always be used when we have a cached file is not an option. Um, when we're sending a large amount of data to the server, so you're filling in some form, we want to upload a file or something like that. And, um, and when you want to send user input, you know, and uh, you really want to have something that's um, like a password or something. You want to have something like post that's much more robust and secure. So we don't talk about, we, we won't talk about security, but really when you have time, have a look at it. So here's some get requests. So here's um, an open get. We saw this already. Um, so we're creating it. We're sending the request. So that's, um, th we can add a random number, of course, to the get request, but just adding some number, make sure we don't get cached. So we're calling this file, adding a random number, and, and it's fine. Um, and this, of course, allows us, for example, for our example, um, to send the artists we're interested in, process the request on the back end, and give us a list of the CDs to this particular band. A post request, pretty much the same, you know. You just open uh, a post, again, called the application, and there's a couple of parameters here, we won't worry about too much, but we're setting the header type, okay, and that's really important because now we're telling it how the data is going to be encoded when we're sending it. So when it's a, an X, www form a URL encoded. And really, that's one of the standard type that you use for the encoding type um, um, when you're using post. And normally there are three kinds of values, um, URL encoded, a multi-part form data, or text plain. And uh, you know, when we're uploading um, files, for example, you know, the form, form data will be sent, and then the file data will be sent. Uh, normally you'll see this x, www form URL encoded. Okay, so um, we see examples of this. But did you notice that there was a true in the open call there? Okay, I said we'd get back to that a little bit later. Okay, that indicates that the request should be asynchronous. That means the JavaScript doesn't have to hang in and wait for server response. It can continue executing all the other scripts while the server response is handled and the response is ready. Uh, that's, um, uh, there's a function that's called then. Um, th this is the unready state function, that will be called. Um, when it's ready and you know it's nice. Now you can force it to be um, synchronous and it might be useful to do that when you're testing but generally it needs to be true. Okay we also saw that there was a ready state um, in the example earlier as well and also status and these are things that you can these are properties that you can use to hold the status of the request and all that kind of stuff. So the ready state tells us um, uh, what's happening. So the request is not initialized, it moves through this phase here, it's not initialized, the server connection is established, the request is received, the processing the request, and the request is finished. And then the onReady state callback function is called every single time that this ready state changes. So when the ready state is 4 and the status is 200, the response is actually ready and ready to go. Um, and uh, uh, so that callback function that you call and use, it's going to be really important. That's why we have if the ready state is 4 and the status is 200, then we can actually update this particular development here with the contents of the file that we've downloaded. So that's why it's 4 and that's why it's 200 because um, 200 means everything was okay, that's what we get from the server, 403 is forbidden, 404 is not found, all that kind of stuff. Um, so these are, are um, these all mean something and they're set up and you know while it is easy to just copy and paste and say well we know that uh, if it's the ready state is 4 and the state is 200 then you know we're ready to go but why okay it's because you've moved through all of this phase here and of course you could actually have and update your if statement if you wanted to do something that 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 at, at any one of these interim phases of the request so anyway it's recommended that if you have multiple um ajax requests to different urls when you want to specify a different callback function for each request and then you change the unload function so that you can pass the url and callback as uh, function parameters um, the response text, which we saw somewhere in this here, yeah, this dot response text, that just gets the response data as a string. Um, and if it's JSON string, we can also get it as an XML string. And uh, there is no kind of response JSON, for example. You know, but, but we get it as a string, and then we can parse it and bring it back as we wish. Okay, So that's really it for um, how, how we handle HTTP requests with AJAX. Thank you very much for watching.